Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We are drinking at a distance again here uh, on Basic Brewing Video. We're ho we hope that uh, everybody out there is staying safe and staying well. And uh, we're, we're going to drink what uh, Steve accidentally named the James Brown Ale. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because I asked Steve to put together a recipe uh, based on a list of ingredients, and, and then he sent me the recipe, and it just it, it meant to be James's Brown Ale, but it just turned out to be James Brown Ale, which I like better. <laughs> and somebody asked, somebody asked me, is it a little funky? Wow, I feel good. <laughs> I'd have to, have to say no. <laughs> Uh, but this recipe, uh, a few episodes of uh, Basic Brewing Radio ago, I had Chris Colby on to talk about brown ales, and he hates brown ales, uh, unbeknownst to me. And so he went on a, <laughs> a tirade about how he uh, how he didn't like brown ales because you know there was like they were like a compromise between styles, and there wasn't anything special about them. So uh, I got some 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 feedback, some pushback from listeners that said, hey, I like brown ale." including a Stephen from Rhode Island who sent me uh, his recipe and I sent it to Steve and you converted it into uh, you know the document that we're working off of today uh, and we'll see, we'll see if brown ales are, are just meh or if they're if they're good uh, I started off with eight gallons uh, or 30 liters of water at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C and into that <clears throat> get your pen ready it's to be a lawn, uh, laundry list here. 7.7 7, or 8.75 pounds or 4 kilograms of pale ale malt, 15 ounces or 425 grams of 10 Lovabon Munich malt, 7 ounces or 198 grams of chocolate malt, 7 ounces or 198 grams of malted red wheat, 7 ounces or 198 grams of 80 Lovabon crystal, and 4 ounces or 113 grams of black prince, which is that debittered uh, malt. Uh, I mashed for about an hour at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C and then I collected my wort and did a 60 minute boil. Uh, at the beginning of that 60 minute boil I added 1 ounce or 28 grams of Glacier at 4.5% alpha acid, 1 ounce or 28 grams of Mount Hood at 4.8% alpha acid at 5 minutes before the end of the boil and also at 5 minutes before the end of the boil. I added one ounce or 28 grams of Willamette at 3.8% alpha acid. And then after that five minutes, at the end, very end of the 60 minute boil, I turned the flame out, or the electric flame, and added one ounce or 28 grams of Liberty at 4.3% alpha acid. And then I chilled the wort and pitched Imperial A31 Tartan, which uh, you suggested, Steve, the original recipe from Stephen from Rhode Island called for, uh, you know, an American ale yeast, but you threw kind of a curve here and did the Imperial A31 Tartan. The original Gravity 1051, Final Gravity 1012 uh, for an ABV of 5.2%. So boy, that was, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, grain to talk about. That's a lot of ingredients to talk about. But uh, what do you think, Steve? I love it. It's great. Mm. Oh, it's really good. It's not roasty enough to be a porter. Although I got, I pick, posted a picture of this on Instagram and, and a couple people said, it's too dark to be a brown ale or that's a dark brown ale. And it's pretty dark. And if you didn't want it to be so dark, you could leave out the black prints. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that, that's where the color really came from. And the black prints probably didn't add much flavor to be honest. But um, man, that is a that is a good beer. Yeah. That's, I, I, was I like I was that beer. I was afraid that the Scottish yeast would kind of mute the American hops, but it doesn't. There's enough it brings enough kind of fruitiness into the malt character, but it still lets those um, lets those American hops be present and add bitterness and, you know, a, a nice uh, it's not in your face hop character, but it is a nice Hop character. I cut. I cut you off. I'm sorry, Steve. Go ahead. That's the danger of Skype. <laughs> I was just going to say that the beer. I think that the beer is in just damn near perfect balance with itself, and that's what really impresses me about it. So it has a, a nice, uh, sweet hoppy flavor. It, it's relatively sweet beer, but it doesn't finish sweet. It finishes with a kind of burnt 
a little bit of a burnt coffee um, background note. Not real strong. It's not. It's not nearly as strong in that way as a, like an extra, uh, you know, an export stout would be. But there is that little bit of roasty coffee or burnt coffee flavor at the very end. It's very nice, but it's it's also kind of refreshing as you drink it. And then the hops, again, they're very much there. I mean, I'm very aware of the hops, but it's not a hop bomb. And that that to me that I like that synergy between the malt and the hops, and then I'm sure that the yeast is bringing some fruitiness out in those hops as well. Any final thoughts? I I have to thank Stephen from Rhode Island from uh, sending in the recipe. I think it's wonderful. It's a beer that I would def- yeah. definitely brew again. If I brewed it again, I might try the American ale yeast instead just to see if there's a you know a big difference between the two. Well, all I know is that that that, that I really like this beer, it, and it in the quaffableness of it, it does remind me a lot of drinking Guinness. It's not a Guinness. It doesn't doesn't taste. You know, you wouldn't put it side by side with the Guinness and go, "Oh, that's a Guinness clone," but it has that same kind of quaffability in a in a dark beer, and I really like it. It's not as it's not as roasty as a, as a Guinness. Uh, but it is, it does have that substantial malt and uh, it does make you want another sip uh, when you take a sip. Oh, for sure. So there you go. Yeah. Didn't you make a pot roast with this? Oh, I'm glad you, I'm glad you reminded me. I did. Thank you. Um, yesterday, and we're having the leftovers tonight, uh, I made a pot roast. I, I put in the crock pot, I put a, a chuck roast. Uh, along with the carrots and onion and celery and potatoes and seasoned it with rosemary and thyme and sage and three cups of this beer and put it into the crock pot all day long and man oh man was it good Uh, so that's your cooking tip for this uh, this uh, week (laughs) (laughs) for this episode man I'm glad you I'm glad you uh, reminded me of that it was it sure was good I mean, I usually use um, like a cheap red wine <laughs> to do that, but I could tell the difference between the the wine version and this version. And I gotta say, I, I think I think I prefer the uh, the brown ale uh, version better. Yeah, so, there you go. All right, <laughs> all right, Steve, get back to work. Uh, get back to work. Back to the slave mind. <laughs> stay, stay safe, everybody. Uh, stay tuned. Yeah. And uh, we will uh, do our best to keep bringing you stellar content like this. Stellar. If it gets any more exciting, I'll fall asleep too. (laughs) Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. Where's the tomato can? I can't find the tomato can.